These are 50 reasons why the United States is a terrifying place to live, and no, I'm not talking about politics. I'm talking about the Beast of Bray Road, the Dover Demon, and a whole lot more that's legend to live in the darkest corners of this country. So grab some popcorn and a pickle, and let's find out what horrifying monster lives in your state from A to Z. Alabama. Huggin' Molly is set to stalk the streets of Abbeville at night, and stories of her vary, but she's usually a seven foot tall woman with a long sweeping black dress. If she sees you when it's dark, she'll run up to you, grab hold of you, give you a big ol' hug, and then scream in your ear. It doesn't seem that scary, but everybody's brave until it happens to them. Alaska. Alaska mermaids are a nightmare. They're not beautiful, they don't sing, and they have a mouth full of razor sharp teeth. This version of mermaid actually walks on two feet. So if you find yourself in Alaskan waters for whatever reason, prepare to be fish food. Arizona. The Mongolian monster is a large bipedal Bigfoot type creature that's said to be around seven feet tall with reddish brown hair. Reports say that it's omnivorous, nocturnal, and sometimes violent. Arkansas. Just outside of Newport, Arkansas is the White River, and it's said to be home of a monster. No, no, it's, it's the home of a massive fish. This monster of the fish has been seen over the last 150 years, and was even acknowledged to exist by the indigenous people of the area. And while most people call this creature a monster, it's actually quite a beloved cryptid of Arkansas. California. Arguably the most famous monster on this list is Bigfoot himself, or rather, herself. Nicknamed Patty for one of the two men that recorded her infamous walk, this creature has eluded explanation for decades. Some say this was just a person in a costume, but when you look into the logistics of it, this is highly unlikely. This very well may be the most real piece of evidence we have for Bigfoot's existence. At least until somebody brings in a body. Colorado. Tommyknockers are usually about two feet tall and greenish in color. If you see one, they'll typically be in miners' clothing and maybe stealing some of your tools. They're known to be both kind and helpful, but also mischievous. Depending on where you get your story, melon heads may originate from different areas. However, they're almost always seen as being small humanoid beings with large bulbous heads. They'll take cover as you pass, and once you get close enough, they'll jump out and attack you. Delaware. Pukwudgies are two to three feet tall goblin-like creatures. They originate from the stories of the Lenape tribe. They're not only mischievous, but can be downright cruel. If you find yourself in the forest of Delaware and feel like you're being watched, you may be in the crosshairs of a Pukwudgie. Florida. The skunk ape is one of the few creatures we actually have a photograph of. While you may see this and think that it's just an escaped orangutan or gorilla, many have said that this is a cousin of Bigfoot. It's been seen walking on two feet quite naturally, whereas all the great apes are actually true quadrupeds. Georgia. The Yumi Junzi are three separate clans of tiny people living in the forest of Cherokee Nation. Depending on which one you run into, you may be treated with respect, disdain, or as the butt of a joke. They're magical beings capable of turning invisible, and if you'd like to learn more about them, I actually have a whole video on my channel. Hawaii. Minihune are small dwarfish-like people on the island of Hawaii that are said to be incredible craftsmen. They only come out at night, and the only people that are capable of seeing them are the Minihune themselves and the people that they deem worthy. Idaho. This monster is said to be a hideous beast that was seen in 1868, and to describe it, I'm just going to read an excerpt from a book. The first thing he saw of the monster was an elephant's trunk rising from below the surface and spouting water. This was followed by a snake-like head the size of a wash tub, with a single horn that kept moving up and down. It had long black whiskers on both sides of the face. It had 10 inch long fangs and a red forked tongue that spewed green poison. When it hauled its massive body onto the shore, the old timer noted that it must have been 20 feet long and it stank to high heaven. On July 25th in 1977, two massive birds swooped down out of the sky and almost carried away a young boy. He was playing in the backyard when his mother noticed him getting attacked. She ran out and fought off the birds, and had she not done that, that kid wouldn't be here today. These creatures are known as the Lawndale Thunderbirds, and they've been seen by multiple witnesses. They were all black with a white ring around their neck. Not too dissimilar from the Argentavis Magnificens, a real bird known to have existed in South America. Indiana. Seldom do we find that fantasy and reality are one and the same, and Indiana mud mermaids are no exception. The following is an excerpt from Weird Indiana your travel guide to Indiana's local legends and best kept secrets. The beast is about five feet in length. Its general color is yellowish. The body between the four legs resembles that of a human being. Back of the hind legs, it tapers to a point. The extremities resemble hands and are webbed and furnished with sharp claws. It is devoid of hair. Its ears are sharp pointed and stand up like those of a dog. Iowa. In the fall of 1903, several men that were considered to be well-respected saw a half man half-animal creature in Van Meter, Iowa, and it had a horn on its head that shot light from it. Later on, the town formed a mob to go hunt down this creature at the old mine where it's said to have lived. 
But when they got there, they found not only the original creature, but a second smaller one as well. They fired bullet after bullet, but every time they either missed or did nothing. Eventually the creatures flew off and they were never seen from again. Kansas. The Beeman monster is another one of those Bigfoot type creatures. It's said to resemble a wolf or coyote in its face and can run on all fours if needed to, but it does walk upright. Sightings of this thing go back to the early 1900s and continue to this day, so you best beware of the Beeman monster. Kentucky. The Geneva water monster is said to call Kentucky home. Supposedly, it has a horse-like head with a duck bill, with the body of a stretched out catfish, and is covered in green moss. Also, this creature may or may not have just been the misidentification of an actual catfish or a log. But it's rumored that this creature is said to be the cause of multiple drownings in the area. There's just no telling. Louisiana. You're going to want to get your silver bullets and stakes because Lou Garou is a werewolf. This creature is said to prowl the swamps around Acadiana, Greater New Orleans, and the sugarcane fields and woodlands of this region. It has the typical head of a wolf and body of a man expected from a werewolf. Maine. This is less of a monster and more of a story of the ultimate monster known to mankind, the devil himself. In an unknown time period, some construction workers were tasked with building a road, but in their path set a large boulder. So they did everything they could to move this boulder, but it just wouldn't budge. Eventually, one man jumps on top of it and declares he would sell his soul to the devil if it would be moved. The next day, the boulder was no longer in their path, and the man was never seen again. The only thing that was left as evidence was a large footprint embedded in the rock left by some great beast. That boulder is now a part of a cemetery wall. Maryland. This monster wasn't always a monster, according to the legend. A scientist was working at the Beltsville Agricultural Research Center, and his job included experimenting with animal DNA. One day, an experiment went horribly wrong, and he got goat DNA mixed in with his own blood. The man mutated into a horrifying half-man, half-goat hybrid. And once this happened, it's said that he had a hunger for human flesh. And every few years, somebody comes forward saying they caught a glimpse of this beast, toting around an axe for his next victim. Massachusetts. The Dover Demon was spotted on April 21st and 22nd in 1977. Bill Bartlett and his two friends were the first one to see it. They were driving down a road when they saw what appeared to be a small dog or cat, so they slowed down to see what it was. Once the headlights struck it, they realized that this was not a typical animal. It had an oversized head and was crawling on the side of a wall. Now you could sum this up just to being a teen prank if two other people didn't see the exact same thing. It was seen by John Baxter and Pete Mitchell as they were walking home. And just to top it all off, two other people had seen the same creature, Abby Brabham and Will Trainter. Maybe they all got together and decided to make up the story, or maybe they actually did see the Dover Demon. Michigan. The Michigan Dogman is said to be a seven foot tall man-dog hybrid, kind of like a werewolf. This creature has even been seen all the way back into the 1880s by two lumberjacks. The legend says that the Dogman appears in 10 year cycles, with years ending on 7th. But a theory by a prominent podcast, Sasquatch Chronicles, actually says that Dogman sightings are most likely a different form of Bigfoot. Just like how you have gorillas and orangutans, you also have mandrills and baboons. So perhaps the Michigan Dogman is the mandrill to the Bigfoot's gorilla. Minnesota. Contrary to popular belief, a wendigo is not a large beast with the head of a wolf with antlers of a deer and legs of a goat. I'll describe it in a second. It's actually a lot worse. This creature has long been known to exist to the Algonquin, Ojibwe, Eastern Cree, Salto, West Main, Swampy Cree, Nascapi, and Innu peoples. And according to the legend, a wendigo is created when a human resorts to cannibalism to survive. But if you do happen to see one, it's an absolute nightmare. This is from Basil Johnston, an Ojibwe teacher and scholar of Ontario, Canada. The wendigo was gaunt to the point of emaciation. Its desiccated skin pulled tautly over its bones, with its bones pushing out against its skin, its complexion the ash gray of death, and its eyes pushed back deep into their sockets. The wendigo looked like a gaunt skeleton recently disinterred from the grave. What lips it had were tattered and bloody. Its body was unclean and suffering from separations of the flesh, giving off a strange and eerie odor of decay decomposition, and death, and corruption. Mississippi. And surprise, surprise, it's another Bigfoot-type creature, but this time in Mississippi. According to the legend, the Chautauqua monster was once held captive in a circus and was known as the Ape Man due to him appearing to be half man and half ape. This monster was so fierce and violent, he had to be kept in his own separate rail card whenever the train was relocating the circus. Well, one day, the train crashed, letting all of the animals out, and the ones that didn't escape died. Two weeks after this crash, 
the Chitawa monster was seen in the forest in Mississippi. People went out to recapture it, but never found anything. And oddly enough, Bigfoot sightings are still happening to this day in Mississippi. Missouri. Momu the monster's most famous sighting was in July of 1972. Two boys were playing outside while their sister was inside. She heard them scream and she ran out to go check on them. And what she sees is a giant man-ape creature holding a dead dog in its hand. The girl described it as a man-like creature with a pumpkin-shaped head and glowing orange eyes. And these kids aren't the only ones to have seen this. A woman in her 20s, a local fire department chief, and a member of city council have also seen this creature. So there's got to be something to it. This monster isn't as far-fetched as some. The Shunkawadakin is a Native American name given to this beast, and for good reason. The word translates into carrying off dog because it would sneak into tribes at night and do just that. Many white settlers believed that this was just a myth until they caught sight of the creature themselves in the 1880s. And everyone who has seen it since has basically described the same thing. They say that it's nearly black and has high shoulders and a back that sloped downward. Kinda sounds like a hyena. But legend or not, I would just keep your dogs in at night. Nebraska. Lake Walgren is said to be the home of- Of a monster. No, no well, yes, the, the Lake Walgren monster. It has multiple different descriptions, but the one that seems to be the most popular is by a local man named J.A. Johnson. He described an animal that was dull gray or brown, and similar to an alligator, but much larger. He said that it had a horn between its eyes and nostrils. Some people say that this monster was put there by Satan himself, but if this creature really is 40 feet long, I'd rather just go swim in a pool. Nevada. To the Washo Native Americans, water babies inhabit all bodies of water within their boundaries. They mimic the cry of a human baby to lure their victims into them, but they're said to also be good spirits. Washo healers would sometimes enter a sacred cave where it's said that the water babies lived. They would ask them for help and advice and renew their healing powers. So picture Bigfoot, but taller and on a diet, and you have the New Hampshire Wood Devils. There's speculation as to whether these creatures could be a subspecies of Bigfoot or just an entirely new creature on their own. But regardless of what they are, they have been repeatedly spotted in the woodlands and hills of Coos County, New Hampshire since the 1930s. So next time you're in the forests of Coos County and you hear an ungodly howl, you might be sharing the forest with a wood devil. New Jersey. The Jersey Devil is said to stalk the shadows in the forests of Pines Barren, New Jersey. And the descriptions are usually very similar. It has a goat or horse-like head with thick bat wings and horns upon its head. Its arms are usually seen as small cloven hooves with a forked tail. La Llorona is the story of a Mexican woman who fell madly in love with a very prominent Mexican man. But he didn't want anything to do with her because she had kids. So she decides to take her kids to the river, drown them, then she goes back to this Mexican man explaining what she had done. He was disgusted with it and said he wanted nothing to do with her. So she goes back to the river and is cursed. She's unable to rest until she finds all of the bones of all of her children. New York. This is one of those stories you tell around the campfire at night. George Cropsey had a wife and a kid that he would usually take to their summer home by the lake. One day he was called away to work, leaving his wife and kid unattended. Well, not far off were a couple of local kids from the summer camp. They had snuck out to roast marshmallows. Well, the fire that they had got out of control and got to his house. It burned his wife and kid alive. It's said that after George had heard the news, he turned completely white and disappeared for two weeks. Later on, a counselor had heard screaming at that same summer camp. So he goes out to check it out, turns on the flashlight directly into the cabin, and he sees George Cropsey standing over the mutilated body of a kid. Now this may be just a story, but it's a monster nonetheless. North Carolina. The Beast of Bladenboro Road refers to a monster that's said to be responsible for a string of deaths in Bladenboro, North Carolina. Eyewitnesses said that it resembles a cat, but much larger. Some say that it was four and a half feet long, while others say that it was much smaller. A group of hunters had gone out tracking this creature and saw claws at least an inch long, and the prints indicated that it must have been between 80 and 90 pounds. But don't let this description fool you. This creature seems to be much more than just an ordinary mountain lion. The beast of Bladenboro has claimed the lives of dozens of large dogs, and has continued on a killing spree for years until the 1950s. North Dakota. The Lakota Native Americans called North Dakota home along with other places as well. And according to stories of the Lakota, the Unsigli is a large serpent and is the cause for many unexplained disappearances and deaths. It's said that this serpent has no true shape, but is always depicted as having eyes of fire and a fanged mouth. It has a body that was hidden behind smoke that followed it. The serpent's armor was almost impenetrable. And unlike a snake, this serpent actually had large claws as strong as iron. Oddly enough, it's said that whoever looks at the Unsiglia will go mad, and also that it has a weak spot 
on the seventh spot or stripe on its body. It's a lot like the Ukte Na from Cherokee folklore, so perhaps there's something to these serpents after all. Ohio. This creature had its first notable sighting in 1978 by the grandkids of Evelyn and Hal Clayton. They ran inside screaming and crying about some large hairy monster in the gravel pit outside. They told their grandparents it had dark, dirty, matted fur and was going through some old garbage. And this wasn't their only encounter with the beast. Eventually they had to call the police and they didn't find any tangible evidence aside from some footprints and an awful smell left by the creature. This most likely is another form or subspecies of Bigfoot. Or at least that's what I'm assuming by the description of it being 300 pounds, 7 feet tall, and covered in fur. Oklahoma The little people of Oklahoma are most likely due to the legends of the Cherokee. Once the Trail of Tears happened, and the Cherokee along with many others had made it to Oklahoma, their stories came with them. And they're not the only ones that have stories of these little people. If the little people of Oklahoma are in any way related to the Yunwe Junzi, you can count on them to be mischievous, silly, and sometimes mean. Oregon. So this is another Bigfoot type creature, but more or less they're all unique in their own way. It's kind of like the differences between dog breeds. They vary depending on the climate and the area. This one is the stereotypical form of Bigfoot though. It's been called a giant ape man with dark brown fur, around nine feet tall, and walks on two legs. But this word Sasquatch was most likely taken from the native Canadian word Sasquets, which actually means wild or hairy man. So yeah, Oregon does have its own version of Bigfoot, and it's most likely got relatives in Canada as well. Pennsylvania. A squonk is a mythical creature that lives in the hemlock forest of Pennsylvania, and its origins go back to 1910 in the book Fearsome Creatures of Lumberwoods, and there's actually no story about them before this. In fact, whenever this creature is spotted, its appearance has remained unchanged from person to person. It's said that the squonk is covered in warts and moles and is always unhappy. It supposedly leaves a trail of tears that stain the earth because this creature is always upset. You can find them during dawn and dusk when they're most active, but if you corner one, it'll evaporate into tears. Honestly, this just kind of made me sad. Rhode Island. In the woods of Rhode Island once lived the Narragansett people, and they had many stories of creatures and beings, one of which was the Nokomo. Similar to others on this list, they are little people that live in the woods, but this is one creature you'll be happy that you run into. The Nokomo are said to be very kind and helpful little people, and while they're similar to Pukwudgies, they're not as volatile at all. As long as you treat them with respect, they bring good fortune and even supernatural assistance when you need it. South Carolina. The Lizard Man of Skateboard Swamp is a monster that calls the swamps in Lee County home. The story starts on July 14, 1988, when the sheriff's office was called from a car being damaged overnight while in the area of Browntown, outside of Bishopville. The car had teeth marks and scratches with hair and muddy footprints left behind. It was reported that the driver had seen the creature and it was seven feet tall and green. It had three fingers, red eyes, and skin like a lizard with snake-like scales. The sightings would continue with media and news coverage as well, but ultimately, they never found the creature. South Dakota. The stream of the Missouri River is said to be home of a monster. No, no, it's, well, yes. It's said to be the home of a monster that isn't seen very often, but when it is, the person who sees it is said to go crazy, restless, and starts writhing in pain until they ultimately die. The way it's described as being covered in hair similar to that of a buffalo, but is red in color. It only had one eye on its head, and above that eye sat a single horn. Its backbone was protruding and was notched, kind of similar to that of a saw blade. Tennessee. You may feel as though the not deer is just a new type of animal that actually lives out in the forest, but I'd be terrified to know that I'm sharing the woods with something like this. The not deer is best understood as being seen, and at first you think it is a deer, but when you keep looking at it, you see that the proportions are all wrong. Some people say that this creature has more joints than it actually needs on its legs, and its head and neck are just all out of proportion. It just doesn't make any sense, but in almost all of the sightings, all the descriptions say that the eyes don't sit on the side of the head like a regular deer, but on the front like a predator. Texas. This little monster needs little to no introduction. The chupacabra is said to inhabit the plains and mountains of Texas and the surrounding states, and even Mexico as well. It feeds on livestock and got its name from draining the blood of goats. This creature has been summed up to just being a dog with mange, but if that were true, how did it manage to have its first sighting in Puerto Rico, move to Mexico, and travel up to Texas, all while making two puncture wounds on all of its victims and draining their blood? It just doesn't add up. The Chupacabra has two basic appearances. One resembles a rabid, mangled dog, while the other says it walks upright with large red bulbous eyes. Utah. The Bear Lake monster isn't anything like a sea bear. It's actually much, much worse. The legend grew from articles written in the 1800s when a Mormon settler in the area began reporting secondhand accounts, but later on said he was lying. 
Although I'm kind of assuming he may have just been doing this to save face. Because back in the day, if people didn't think that you were actually all there mentally, they wouldn't want anything to do with you. And I only bring this up because this creature was supposedly spotted in 2002. Not all of the accounts of the monster align, but one thing that they all have in common is that it resembles a serpent with legs and is around 30 feet long. Sometimes it swims very slowly and other times it moves faster than a freight train. Either way, I'd be careful in the waters of Bear Lake, Vermont. The Pigman of Northfield, Vermont was spotted in 1971 by a farmer in the middle of the night. He was sitting at home when he heard a noise outside. So he got up, went to the window, and saw a man-sized figure whose body was covered in white hair with the facial features just like that of a pig. It later ran off into the night not to be seen again till a couple nights later by a group of students attending a high school dance. Virginia. This is the second to last Bigfoot type creature on this list, but you're going to want to know about it. Off in the depths of the Virginia forest are reports of what people have nicknamed devil monkeys. They're large primates similar to baboons and actually similar to wood devils, except these were seen to be around four to five feet tall and very quick and very agile. They're said to look very primitive though, not quite like a monkey or a baboon, but also not quite like a human. Washington. As the name suggests, a bat squatch is a sasquatch with the wings of a bat. The most recent sighting of this monster was in 1994. The witness, Brian Canefield, was driving his pickup truck when it suddenly came to a stop. He looked around trying to figure out what happened, and then he met the gaze of the bat squatch. He looked at it and described it as having blue fur and yellow eyes. It then jumped into the air and disappeared. And if this was just a one-time thing, we could just sum this up to being one man's delusion. But in 2009 in the Shasta Mountains, it was seen again. West Virginia. You can't really have a complete monster list without at least mentioning the Mothman. The legend says this thing is 10 feet tall with wings and red eyes. The first time it was seen was in 1966 by two grave diggers. The next time was in 1967 as it was flying over the Silver Bridge. But others say that they had seen it sitting atop it. The Silver Bridge is a suspension bridge that goes over the Ohio River. And shortly after this creature appeared, the bridge collapsed and 46 people died. This monster is said to be seen before natural disasters and even 9-11. The Beast of Bray Road is more than just a movie. This monster was first seen in 1936 on a rural road outside of Elkhorn, Wisconsin, but has even been seen into the 80s and 90s. Some Native Americans say that this creature is a wendigo, and some people believe it is a true werewolf, while others say that it's just a different form of Bigfoot. No matter what this creature actually is, it's been seen over and over and over again. Whatever this monster is, it's still out there. Wyoming. Unlike a lot of cryptids on this list, the San Pedro mummy is not only known to truly exist, but we also have pictures of it. This little creature was found in a cave in the San Pedro Mountains of Wyoming, and the widely accepted reason of this little guy's existence was that it was a Native American baby born with a cephalitis, a terminal disease, and the reason that this little guy looks like it has a grown man's face. However, I can't help but wonder if all of that is true, because if it was, why would anyone allow a infant mummy to be displayed over and over and over again by multiple different people. Not only is this morbid and disgusting, but it's very peculiar now that the San Pedro mummy has gone missing. Nobody knows who has it now and nobody knows where it's gone. It smells like a cover up of the little people that we're always hearing about to me. I don't know, let me know what you think in the comments. And while you're down there, let me know if there's any particular monster you'd like me to cover in the future. Until then, check out this video that YouTube says you're gonna love and I'll see you there.